Good afternoon, students. Myself, Dr. Divya Ghildeyal, in continuation with my lecture series for AKTU BTEC first year engineering physics syllabus. Today, I will be briefing you optical fiber uh, in two parts. This is the first part of lecture one of optical fiber. First, see your syllabus. What is there in syllabus? Optical fiber introduction to fiber optics acceptance angle, numerical aperture, normalized frequency, classification of your fiber as single mode, multi-mode and graded index, attenuation and dispersion in optical fiber. So this is your syllabus. What they ask here is usually define acceptance angle and numerical aperture and a numerical for the same or define normalized frequency, classify the types of optical fibers along with a very simple numerical on B mode or write in detail about attenuation and dispersion in optical fibers. This can be a section C question of 10 marks. So what is an optical fiber? Optical fiber is as thin as your human hair and it is based on the principle of total internal reflection of light. Because of the phenomena of total internal reflection, light stays inside the optical fiber. What is optical fiber made up of? It is made up, it is a glass or plastic fiber and it is designed basically to guide the light or give the light a path. This cylindrical guide wave system consists of core and cladding. Core is inside with a higher refractive index. Cladding is outside it with a lower refractive index and a coating to protect the optical fiber from your environmental losses or damages. So it consists of an inner glass core and the outer cladding. These two have refractive indices where core has a higher refractive index compared to cladding and the core and cladding are covered with a protective jacket. It is a very thin, flexible medium having cylindrical shape which consists of the cladding and the protective jacket. Why do we do cladding of uh, optical fiber? Because it adds mechanical strength to the fiber and it helps in reducing scattering losses. This is the biggest advantage of cladding the optical fiber. Now, the basic principle of optical fiber is total internal reflection. So I will explain you total internal reflection. Remember, if the TIR phenomena is not there, light can escape out of optical fiber. So what is basically the total internal reflection? You have heard about the formula that refractive index is given by velocity of light in vacuum upon velocity of light in medium. Now, when light passes, from a denser to a rarer medium, it bends away from the normal. And from Snell's law, the refractive index along with sine of angle of incidence and sine of angle of refraction is given by N1 sine I equal to N2 sine R where I and R represent the angle of incidence and angle of refraction. N1 and N2 represent the refractive indices of the denser and rarer medium. If we increase this angle of incidence slowly, slowly, then the refracted ray, as you can see in this diagram, will start bending more and more. And at a particular angle of incidence, the refracted ray passes perpendicular to normal, that is grazing along the interface. 
so when angle of incidence is further increased there will be total internal reflection this happens where this angle becomes 90 degree is it happens at the critical angle or the critical state this critical angle so when light is traveling from a medium with a higher refractive index into a medium with a lower refractive index it strikes the boundary at more than critical angle all light will be reflected back to the incident medium meaning it will not penetrate in the second medium this point has been used in designing optical fiber and this phenomena is called total internal reflection so what is total why is total internal reflection used in optical fiber because it keeps the light inside the optical fiber a very simple expression for numerical aperture numericals are asked from this expression from snell's law we know that refractive index for uh, is given by sin i by sin r here n 1 2 is the refractive index of second medium with respect to the first i is angle of incidence and r is angle of refraction now if you look at this diagram angle of refraction has become 90 degree so we write sin r as sin 90 degree this has happened at critical angle so we write i equal to theta c so theta c is critical of angle when angle of refraction is 90 degree and sin 90 degree is 1 so sin theta c becomes equal to n2 upon n1 or the critical angle becomes equal to sin inverse n2 divided by n1 now look at how light travels inside an optical fiber this is the diagram of an optical fiber and what is happening in this diagram you look at this ray of light it is incident at a maximum value of incidence for which internal ray will strike at critical angle phi c ray incident at angle more than c will suffer tir at the fiber cladding interface while rays incident at less angle than critical angle will be partially reflected and they may leak out of the fiber this you can consider as one loss of optical fiber also for the long questions this is often asked what are the losses of optical fiber there you can mention this point anyway it has been mentioned in the notes also and theta maximum is known as acceptance angle and the cone of semicircle theta maximum defines is the acceptance cone of the fiber basically it means this much light has been accepted by this fiber okay so acceptance cone of ray again depends upon the refractive indices of the cladding and the fiber fractional refractive index is given by n1 minus n2 divided by n1 where obviously n1 will be greater than n2 critical angle sin inverse n2 by n1 we just derived this expression here for total internal reflection now look at this diagram we take this right angle to triangle abc here this is the critical angle theta c where angle of refraction has become 90 degree and this is angle theta 2 and this is a right angled triangle so what we have done theta c becomes equal to 90 minus theta 2 we have put this value here instead of theta c we write 90 minus theta 2 there is a mathematical formula sin 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta so now cos theta becomes equal to n2 upon n1 another trigonometric equation sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 so we can also write cos theta is equal to under root 1 minus sin square theta equal to n2 by n1 and from snell's law 
sin theta i upon sin theta 2 equal to n1 by n a where refractive index of air we are taking as n a because then we know we can re reduce n a to 1 so the equation will look simpler now putting these values here you get here you cross multiply this expression sin theta 2 becomes equal to n a into sin theta 1 divided by n 1 putting angle of incidence equal to theta maximum we get sin theta 2 equal to n a sin theta maximum upon n 1 and under root 1 minus sin square theta equal to n 2 by n 1 putting these values in this expression above squaring both sides we get sine theta maximum is under root n1 square minus n2 square upon n a or theta maximum is sine inverse under root n1 square minus n2 square where we have considered n a the refractive index of air equal to one so this expression is given by this much now, actually, it is this much angle through which light is being accepted by the fiber. So, acceptance angle, like in English, you say accepted. So, it is the maximum angle made by light ray with the fiber axis so that light can propagate through the fiber after total internal reflection. N1 and N2 are the refractive indices of core and cladding respectively. Aperture means opening. So mathematically, this value is also known as numerical aperture. So mathematically, we say numerical aperture is defined as the sign of the acceptance angle. This angle is a measure of the light gathering power of the fiber. The quantity N A sine theta maximum is called numerical aperture. And the square of numerical aperture is basically, in English, the measure of light gathering power of the fiber. So value of numerical aperture cannot exceed one. You apply your common sense. N A is given by under root of some quantity under root of negative becomes imaginary. So N1 cannot be less than N2. Secondly, the maximum value for this is one mathematically and whatever values of numerical aperture will be there for the optical fiber will obviously be less than one. When numerical aperture is equal to one, look at this formula, then sine theta maximum becomes equal to one and the fiber totally reflects all light entering its space. Fibers with a wide variety of numerical aperture running from around 0.2 and up to 1 may commercially be obtained. This numerical is often asked in your AKTU exam, mathematical value of numerical aperture. They give you N1, N2 and they expect you to find out Na and the refractive index for air can be taken as 1. In case you get confused, you just apply your common sense that N1 cannot be less than N2. If this happens, this quantity will become imaginary because square root of a negative becomes imaginary. So just remember the higher value will be here in the first place, the lower value will be in the second place. Make square of the quantity, either you put the formula for a square minus b square equal to a plus b into a minus b and solve it, or directly you can solve the square value with the help of a calculator. While checking the answer, Cross check that numerical value answer has not exceeded one. It should be less than one. Usually the fibers we get in market are having a numerical aperture value of around 0.5. But anyways, it should be lying somewhere around here. See another numerical. Calculate the numerical aperture and acceptance angle of an optical fiber you have been given the refractive index of fiber core as 1.62 and refractive index of cladding as 1.5. So Na is equal to under root N1 square minus N2 square. 
putting the numerical values of this here we get the square root as this acceptance angles comes out equal to this much in terms of relative refractive index difference relative refractive index means n1 minus n2 divided by n1 we multiply and divide by n1 plus n2 so that we make this expression more user friendly and we can write it in terms of na so n1 square minus n2 square becomes square of numerical aperture we put it here and this becomes equal to n1 under root 2 times of del step index single mode fiber will have a small numerical aperture whereas step index multi mode fiber has large numerical aperture high numerical aperture increases the amount of dispersion that is why low numerical aperture is desirable so quickly let me revise what did i tell you today in this lecture i told you optical fiber consists of core and cladding where refractive index of core is higher than that of cladding i told you optical fiber works on the principle of total internal reflection of light where critic at critical angle the angle of refraction becomes equal to 90 degree optical fiber when it works on the principle of tir lets the whole light stay inside the fiber then i told you mathematically the value of numerical aperture is under root n1 square minus n2 square and acceptance angle is sin inverse under root n1 square minus n2 square and i told you how to do the numericals standard value of numerical aperture is one numerical aperture numerically cannot exceed one it will be answer for your numerical question for numerical aperture will be less than one usually accepted range of answers is around 0.5 thank you